the Prime Minister knows perfectly well he has cross-party support for the banking rescue, but he does not have cross-party support for the record debt that he's racked up in this country. He's, he's fond of quotations. Perhaps he'll try this one from the Institute of Fiscal Studies that says about the Prime Minister, he did not leave his successor as Chancellor with the fiscal room to cope with even a modest economic slowdown, let alone the problems we currently face. For years, for years, the Prime Minister was telling us about the beauties of prudence with a purpose. Now he's telling us about the joys of borrowing without limit. Doesn't that show how just ridiculous he now sounds? Now, let's have, let's have, um, let's have a look at another one of his claims, and particularly relevant on this day when the Governor of the Bank of England says we're going into recession. Will he finally admit that he has not abolished boom and bust? M M Mr. Mr Speaker, I've already answered the question that I agree with the Governor of the Bank of England. And, 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 as, and as far as the issues that he raises about uh, debt, is he, really saying, is he really saying that we should not have stepped in to save Northern Rock? Is he really saying that we should have not used public money to save the Halifax Bank of Scotland? Is he really saying that we shouldn't have used the public money we've done uh, so that we could save the Royal Bank of Scotland? I believe that he needs to look again at what is happening in the global economy and its effect on every country around the world. And if he were to look at what the cause of the problem was, he might be able to have a better idea of what the solution is. And let me, ju let, let, me just, let me just remind me again of what he said. I always think leaders of the opposition have to be careful not to talk down the economy. He said, you know, you know, you know there are... I, I, just, I just repeat. You know there are so, some strong fundamentals in the British economy, and we should celebrate those and point them out. That's what he said, but that was a few weeks ago before what he's saying today. He asked me to recognise the causes of the problems we're now in. Well, I can tell him we're looking at them. Yeah! Why? Just, just for once in his life. Why can he not answer a direct question? He has said dozens, dozens and dozens of times that he had ended boom and bust, that he had rewritten the laws of the trade cycle. Now, with unemployment rising, with growth stalling, with repossessions up, with business clothing, closing, and with the Governor of the Bank of England saying we now face recession, will he now finally admit he did not abolish boom and bust? Yeah! Mr Speaker. I've already answered about the Bank of England Governor and what he said. Let, let me, let me, I, I, think, I, think this is a very, I think this is a very important issue for the country, that they must understand, which the opposition appear not to do, what is the cause of the problems that we're dealing with. You see, you see the, opposition, the opposition like to think this is a problem created in Britain and in the public sector. Everybody knows, apart from the opposition, that this is a global problem that arose in the private sector that was the result of irresponsible and undisclosed private sector lending and has got to be dealt with by recapitalising the banks and by ensuring that banks start funding small business and homeowners. And if they're really interested, as they say, in homeowners and small businesses, then they should be supporting us as we try to get bank lending moving again. And they should be so supporting us as we try to build confidence in the financial system so that it can do the job it was supposed to do, and that is give flows of money to households and to businesses. Now, if the opposition cannot begin to understand the problem, they're going to be a million miles away from the solution. Anyone listening to this exchange will know that he claimed the credit in the boom, so why won't he take the responsibility in the bus? Ask him one more time. It's a simple yes or no. Have you abolished boom and bust? Yes or no? Mr. Speaker, we are not returning to the days of 15% interest rate. And let me say, let, let, let me say, let me say that people people are going to be tested over these next few days on the judgments that they actually make. The judgments of the leader of the opposition and the shadow chancellor as well. But unfortunately. Unfortunately, on Northern Rock, they took the wrong judgment. On deregulating the mortgage market, they took the wrong judgment. On short selling of shares, they took the wrong judgment. 
The Shadow Chancellor proposed a fuel duty escalator, a fuel duty balancing mechanism that would actually lead to us up having to increase today the duty on petrol by three pence. That is the judgment of the Shadow Chancellor. Mr Speaker, with or without the support of the opposition, we will continue to do what is right for this country. Doesn't the Prime Minister understand this? To the millions of people who have seen the values of their home fall, homes fall, to the millions of people who now see their pensions decline, to the thousands of people losing their jobs, to the small businesses who are writing to all of us complaining about 15 per cent interest rates, to all of these people, this is a bust. Yeah. And let me ask him just one more time. Why not admit, just for once in your life, you have not ended boom and bust? Yeah. Mr. Speaker. Isn't it interesting? Not one single policy idea, not, not one attempt to come together as all parties in the interests of the nation, not one attempt to put forward any constructive solution to the problems. And I fear, Mr. Speaker, the reason they can't put forward constructive solutions is they don't have a clue about what the real economy problems are. Thank you, Mr. 